Father, we do come before you to thank you. To thank you, Father, for making a way even when there seemed to be no way. But Father, I thank you most of all for just loving us right where we're at while you're taking us to where we're going. Yes. So Father, we just surrender ourselves unto you mm -hmm. under the leadership of your spirit. <laughs> Father, I ask that your spirit not only be with us, but be upon us to mold us and to shape us, to continue to conform us in the very image of your son. So Father, I want to thank you. Yes, for sending your son to give us a salvation, but I also thank you for giving us your spirit to empower us to accomplish your word as you sent it forth to accomplish. So Father, thanks again for loving us all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Very good. Very good. So, everybody good? Yeah. All right. Just, uh, I've got a few things that I want to get out real quick. To, uh, you can tell we've moved a few things around in here. And when I say we, I'm talking about Carrie and Sherry. <laughs> and, and I like it. I like it. And, uh, I can just tell you this, there's more to come. There's more to come. They've got some good ideas and some things going on. And they did tell me one thing the other day. Said, uh, do you, they said, I walked in, they said, do you like change? I said, yeah, I like change. And they said, I said, they said well, good. I said, I said, there's no growth without change. And so uh, they said, good. I said, now we'll tell you what we did. And they said, it, we found out that, it's, and we've heard you say it before, that it's easier to uh, ask for forgiveness and sometimes it is permission. So I love what they're doing and I love their thoughts and ideas of the advancement. And so uh, uh, things are very good. This is actually the way we had the church set up when we first started. And so it's uh, a lot goes on. And so, but I can tell you there are a few more things uh, going to happen. So. We do in the in back in our fellowship room, we will be putting in new carpet tomorrow. And so and looking forward to it. It's going to be some of the squares similar to this, a uh, little different color, but it's they got it picked out. And whenever I told my wife that we were putting in new carpet back there, and she goes, I hope Carrie and Sherry picked it out. <laughs> And that, referring to where Donald, don't you do it? <laughs> so so uh, they did, and so and it looks very good. I love I love what they're doing. So that'll be happening in there tomorrow. And so in saying that, as soon as the services are over today, I'm going to ask a couple of you men to go back in here and to take the tables and chairs that are in the fellowship room and to move them out of there into the. Uh, uh, other little room over there and so uh, bible study room if you can get that done also tomorrow night at 5 30 we're going to be having a uh, rivers kids meeting we got to uh, get a lot of things going together and getting everybody on the same page it's uh school has started it's about time to kick off some some newness in some areas so about 5 30 tomorrow we will be meeting uh about the river kids and stuff also, Sherry, have you got something you want to say about the Operation Christmas Child? Or yes. So, oh. and just a little quicker than what people realize. So that's right. It's going to be here before you know it. Uh, we'll be packing in October. And also, what I'm asking is, we have plenty of the small stuffed animals. I mean, we're overloaded with those, but we need school supplies and we need things to go into the boxes and. Um, now is the time of year to pick up, um, uh, especially the things that we always run short on are the little solar calculators. We need those. Um, erasers and a very strange thing, but we'll even not pencil sharpeners for, for the pencils because in the countries that they go to, uh, 
most of them don't have a hand crank or automatic, you know, kind of thing. Um, and a, a lot of the sharp knives, the mothers don't want them, you know, uh, <laughs> sharpening their pencils with the knives that they cut the food with. So, uh, pencil sharp, but just school supplies in general. Um, pens, pencils, um, crayons, the 24 pack crayons, rulers, uh, the calculators, uh, those kind of things. Plus other small gifts, um, especially, um, boys gifts. We do have a lot of uh, matchbox cars that uh, we were given. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, but just start keeping the things in mind and we'll keep you uh, attended as to when we're actually going to have the, the packing party. Um, I do have several dolls, but um, one thing that uh, we can send, um, we cannot send toothpaste, we cannot send soap, we cannot send anything liquid. We can send toothbrushes, we can send washcloths, um, we can we can't send lip gloss, but we can send chapstick, and um, in the past it's been kind of questionable, but yes, uh, chapstick and lipstick for the girls, and in a lot of these countries they they get real excited when they receive that. So just put that on your list. Think about it if you're out and about and you find these things, just pick up a few of them. Uh, you can bring them here. I have a, a spot for it. And if you have any questions, you can contact me, and I'll be happy to let you know. Thank you. Sure. One thing is the uh, boxes that we put them in are they the boxes that they send, or do we need to start gathering up? Oh no, we <clears throat> we have used their boxes in the past, but. Because I've been overseas and I've seen some of the, the cardboard shoe boxes don't hold up real well. So we like the plastic shoe boxes with the lids. That way they, they can put their stuff in afterwards. It protects them from the bugs, from the elements, from moisture. And also if, uh, if you guys want to pick up, uh, the clear shoe boxes, it doesn't make any difference. You know, some of them you can get with blue lids, purple lids, green lids. It doesn't make any difference on the lids, but uh, the clear shoe boxes and, um, just keep in mind that it's, also, to lay up on your heart, to start sitting aside on the shoe boxes, uh, it's not 100% required, but they do request that we send $9 with each box that we fill. And that's for shipping and handling to make sure that everything goes in. They also, every single box that is sent out has what's called the greatest journey inside of it. And it gives them uh, a little prelude to the actual training. And if they want to join, it's a 12-week course that they go through. Our kids here, actually, uh, we ordered it and they went through that, but it gives them uh, who Jesus is and the plan of salvation. And at the end of that, they get uh, uh, a little certificate and a Bible. So clear shoe boxes, school supplies, little gifts, compact mirrors. That's another thing. The girls have hairbrushes, combs, that kind of stuff. Just, just think of what you would want to send. So anything like that, if you have questions again, contact me. I'll, I'll be happy to help you out. One more thing. Okay. Would you share with them where you're going tomorrow or Tuesday? Tuesday? Oh, praise the Lord. Yes, we have the opportunity. Um, as you know, I am a, a work a lot with um, Emmaus, and we've also, as you know, have gathered up clothing, shoes, toys. Um, I have a, a, we have been very blessed by a, a company here in town that, um, make sure that things that uh, they can't use anymore or get to the point that they have to do something with, they contact me and we've been able to have toys, clothing, all kinds of things. So one of the girls that I did an Emmaus walk with um, in January is the director of a homeless shelter in Liberal, Kansas. And we got to talking and found out that uh, she actually houses, she has one section that houses men at this homeless shelter. And all, but they take anything. They they work with children. They work with women. They have another home that is just women and children. So the Lord has again provided for us. Um, to see, I'm taking, and it is a pickup load full. I have another contributor sitting in the back right there, thanks to her that uh, is going to. We're taking children's clothes, men's clothes. We have new clothes, uh, used clothes, gently used clothes, shoes all kinds of things that the Lord has blessed us with. So I am just so thankful that, um, that our community is such a giving community and we're able to be the hands and feet of Christ extended. And uh, for people that, you know, that feel hopeless, that think that nobody cares, that just a small gesture of that to, to be able to give them, uh, you know, a coat, to give them a pair of shoes, to give them, 
you know, clothes to wear that they don't have, to give them a blanket to be able to contribute to all these things. And uh, it's just a real blessing. So uh, pray for us um, that we have a safe trip. I know the Lord's going to take us safely up here and bring us back because yep. this is something that he's already, uh, you know, sent for us. And that's it. And one more thing since you're one more thing. I think. Um, some of you may not have known that um, my mother, well, you may know that my mother's um, in the nursing home. But uh, she was one of the residents that was um, diagnosed with coronavirus. And she was taken to the hospital and all. But, you know, praise God, the good part about it was when they told me, there was not one moment of fear, of anxiety or anything. The only thing I was concerned, you know, upset about is the fact that, okay, well, all the precautions and she still got it. But she has not shown any signs, no fever, no anything. And... Um, Praise the Lord, she's doing great. They've sent her back to the home. Um, again, no signs, no symptoms, no anything. So you know what? God's good and God yeah. is faithful. And if you believe what you have spoken, that it will be true, then it is true because God's faithful in his word. So just thank you for that. Amen. Amen. Very good. All good? Well, for now. Can, for now. I can think of other things. We'll do that later. <laughs> so very good. Very good. There's uh, also we got a lot of things that are coming up. Uh, there's going. We are not going to have our uh, normal chili cook-off this year. What we are going to do, I know, I know, but we have an opportunity that is arose that we weren't expecting, and so we're going to look at doing things a little different. Uh, the fall foliage is not going to be at the school the way it's normally been the last several years. And they are actually going to be doing the fall foliage, the chamber is, down at the museum, having a car show and stuff down there, and then a few vendors and stuff up and down Kingman Street over here and up and down this alley. So we've decided that instead of doing our chili cook-off, we're going to have we're going to be cooking chili off as a donation fundraiser to where people can come in and purchase that. This way. Ross, we can purchase some bigger prizes for our chili cook-off next year. <laughs> There's alternative motives in this. So, so we're, we're looking forward to that, and we'll do that with the chili and the baked potatoes, and we'll give you more information about that a little bit later. But uh, also, I have the opportunity next Sunday, I'm going to be traveling to Elk City for uh, and be ministering over at Trinity Fellowship over there. And uh, Dusty Billings will be bringing a word here, and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm, uh, Dusty's got a lot of things Lord laid on him, and so I'm looking forward to him sharing here. And so I've got <clears throat> a word. And I believe that the Lord has definitely given me a word that will, that is impacting my life. But I also know that when you receive his word, it comes with an ability to accomplish what it was sent forth to do. And so I know that this word today, you're going to hear something that will have an ability in it when it's applied to your life, that there will be a transformation go on in your life. That's part of that growing as Drew was talking about. And so we're going to look at some things here. I want you to go ahead, if you would, and pull up that scripture in Acts 2.38. And y'all can look at it here, and then I'm going to explain that or explain something here to you. But I heard this story, and I wanted to share it with you, pertaining to this scripture. And this uh, this come up, and is it, this lady? She had been out shopping, and she had been shopping around town and doing some different things, and she come home only to find a burglar in her house. There was a thief in her house, and so she walks in. She's carrying her groceries. And she drops the groceries and the bags and everything. And she goes, stop. Acts 2.38. That guy just froze. Just stood there. And then it came to the point where she was able to pick up her phone. She called 911 and she says, I've got, this is what's going on. This is what I've done. Can you get over here as quick as possible? And sure enough, here wasn't long, and here the police show up. And as the police got there, they walk in, and that man is still standing there, just like that. And they said, 
said, they rest him and all this and said, said, sir, said, if you don't mind me asking, says, why did you just stand there whenever you was, whenever she yelled out a scripture at you? And he goes, scripture? She told me she had an ax in 238. <laughs> <laughs> so, the word of God will accomplish what it was sent for to do. Now that scripture, that scripture is very, that's pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> that scripture. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to talk of that a little bit today because that is the key in receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so, I want to talk to you about being born again for just a moment. But be brief. I'm going to be brief in some of this. But as born again believers, are you born again? Are you born not of a natural descent, but of God's decision, not of man's decision? And you were born from above. You were born of God. That's what it means to be born again. Being born again doesn't mean you join a church. It means you become church. And so it comes into the deal to where I know that as a born again believer, you have control of what controls you. You were created to reign in life. Where is Jesus? He's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. But he's given us his spirit. He said he was going to go to the Father and he would ask the Father to send you another comforter or counselor, a lot of different names that are used there through the word, to be with you all the time. The Holy Spirit is walking and talking with you. But many times we don't walk and talk with him. Now that's going to be a, a little story about what where I'm coming with some of this, but Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. God desires that you not only reign with him, he desires that you walk in victory. And so as I look at this, I see in Romans 14, 17. I better turn over there. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking. It's not a matter of walking in the flesh. <clears throat> but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That is his character. That is the character. Of the, the Holy Spirit is righteous. The Holy Spirit is peace. He's the spirit of peace. The Holy Spirit is joy. Now, those are just some of the characteristics of who he is. And so it's our choice to implement his character within our lives or to continue to walk in the ways of the world. That's our choice. But as believers, we're called to implement the character of the Holy Spirit into our lives on a daily, daily moment. Now to the measure that we implement this righteousness, peace, joy, again, his character, into our attitude, our decisions, our behavior, will determine to what level we will reign in this life. His character, is an expression of his authority. So when we implement that, his character into our lives, we are expressing his authority. But it starts on the inside. But also, as we take this righteousness, this peace, this joy, the very characteristics of who he is, and we see that implemented into our lives intentionally, that is an act of worship. 
This is, and he says, he seeks those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay. Now in Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, and we're just going to look at these first couple of verses here. And it says, therefore, I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy to offer, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Now, before I go any further in this, I want to point something out here. What is mercy? It says, in view of God's mercy, what is it? Many times we think about it, and this is why I've thought about it for years, is that that talks about God's forgiveness. I re because I received God's forgiveness, something else happens. But what is it that happens? What is it? Whenever I begin to look at this word mercy and to see it's not just about forgiveness, but it's also an invitation to walk in His Spirit. It's an invitation to walk in His Spirit. The Spirit of righteousness, peace, and joy. Remember he said back over in 2 Peter, he says that he has given us everything that we need for life and godliness so that we may participate in his divine nature. Okay? You know what? I'm saved. I got saved in 1985, 86, 1986. No, 85. I got saved. <laughs> I got married in 86. That was the second part of my salvation. So, but I got, I was born again in November of 1985. But guess what? I am still being saved. I'm a work in progress. But guess what? This is cool. One day, I will be saved. Signed, sealed, delivered. And you know what? I believe that I see that yes, I receive salvation and I'm walking my salvation out, growing, learning, adding His character to my life. But one day, I'm going to see it in the fullness of the salvation that I have in Him. And so, in the book, now let me stay here for just a minute in Hebrews 12. It says, Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. God has good stuff in store for you. But many times we allow the enemy to steal what God has for us because we focus on things that God did not desire for us to focus on. You know, he told us that we're going to face trials and tribulations. We're going to go through storms in this world. But he says, fear not, little flock, for it pleases the Father to what? Give you the kingdom, his righteousness, his peace, and his joy. Okay. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 2. I'm just going to do this one deal. This is, we did the other one a few days ago. And it says, Let us fix our eyes on the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy, who for the joy, set before him, endured this cross, scorning the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That sounds like a place of victory to me. And we can see that it says it was for the joy. Now, what is joy? When I begin to look at this, I begin to, to think about joy is actually a strength. It's word very plain. It says the joy of the Lord is your strength. But it's a strength with an anticipation that there's more to come, more good stuff to come. 
more of his character, more of his, as we say in that song, knowing him better. Knowing him better. Okay? Better things yet to come. Who can tell me what four, uh, Philippians 4.13 says? I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Is that truth? Okay? It's his word, so yeah, it's true. Who can tell me what uh, Luke 1.37 says? For nothing is impossible with God. No thing is impossible with God. Okay? I had a dream last night about Jack Taylor. And it just... And we've got reports. We, Jack was supposed to come back here a few couple of months ago and because of health issues. He wasn't able to travel and still hasn't been able to travel. But I had a dream about him last night and I saw Jack Taylor standing upright with his chest out and I mean he was stronger than I had ever seen him. And I know that because of that, he thought we picked him up at an airport and he walks in there and, and we embrace, but then he immediately, actually, I don't know what the, all this means, but him and Drew went on and walked off together. And I was there and I sit there and I put my arm around Frida. She come in behind and we sat there and we continued to go forth. And you know what? I believe that Jack and Frida are going to continue to go forth in the ministry. I believe that there's a new strength that is being placed into their lives. Because I can tell you, if you talk to Jack Taylor, you're going to hear a spirit of joy rise up within him. And so I say that to tell you this, because I remember several years ago, Jack coming and Jack would spend time with, he'd come and stay a week with, speak one time here and then stay a week with us. And I loved it. I've got to spend a lot of very quality time with him. But one of the things that I remember him telling us about that scripture, for nothing is impossible with God. Because there's been times in my life that I felt like I come into some pretty impossible situations that I couldn't see how things could get beyond where they were at the time. But Jack imparted this into me and I wrote it out the best I remember the way he said it, but it says, no freshly spoken word of God or a spoken word from God, what's he telling you? will come to you without the ability to accomplish what it was sent forth to do. That's also scripture. But he broke that scripture down in a way that it has a new meaning to me. You know what is impossible? It's impossible for you to be pleasing with God without the spirit of God in your life. It's impossible for you to be or to live a life of fullness without God in your life and being aware of his presence in your life. That's why I love those deals like that. My prayer is that there's a new hunger and a new thirst in my life to know him better. But I don't want to pray that just for me. I want that for us. For all of us. Because that's who, it's his desire. And that's how you're going to do that over there. Prove what his good, pleasing, and perfect will is. By his spirit living through you. Now, in James the book of James 1, verse 22, it says that do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately 
forgets what he looks like. You know, there's, I don't know, I'm going to get ahead of myself. But the man who looks intently, what does it intently mean? You know, whenever I think of something, if I'm looking intently, I'm serious about it. I want to know. And so I, if I'm only looking to see what I look like, I need to be looking in the Word of God. I need to be looking and hearing what Jesus says about me. I need, and if I want to look at you that way, I need to see what the word says about you, not what the world says about you. How many of you know that the world will lie to you? Okay. But looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom. And continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. God set us up in victory. He set us up to walk in the victory of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, in Galatians 5, I put all these little sticky notes in here so I can turn real quick. I got too many sticky notes. Galatians chapter 5. This is talking in verse 16. It begins to talk about living life by the Spirit. Now there's different, depending on what translation you read, some of them like the King James, New King James, I believe they, it doesn't say live by the Spirit, but it says walk in the Spirit walk in the spirit and that's what i have entitled my message today is to walk in this walk in and with holy spirit so walking in the spirit is what we're getting at here today because i can tell you this that's where the victory is that's where the victory is starts off in verse 16 it says so I say, live by the Spirit or walk in the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Do you know what desires are? In the King James, I believe it says lust. When you hear the word lust, what do you think of? Something that's dirty? And so we can begin to see this and it says, there's things and it says, uh, the desires of the lust of the sinful nature, it says, for the sinful nature desires or lust after what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary. Guess what? They're at war with each other. Did you ever do something and then go, why did I do that? Oh good, I'm not the only one. <laughs> but you get yourself caught up into something which is a lust that wars against the Spirit of God. And it goes on and said, they are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. Now, let me tell you something. Whenever I had begin to have to think about this, being under law, I know that I was saved by grace through faith. Therefore, I'm not under law. You know what? Most everybody sitting in church today knows that. Most everybody that will ever has ever been in church very long at all, you know you're not under law. But yet, we continue to put ourselves under law trying to do something good enough to be for God. And that's not where He called us to live our lives. He called us to live our lives from the risen, from the resurrection of our Lord. He is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And if you look into his word, it says you also were seated with him in the heavenly realm. Now we learn to look at life from that perspective instead of from the perspective of this world. And so that changes things. There's where my war is at the time. My battle that goes on because I want to see things through a fleshly eye and not a spiritual eye. So, okay. Everybody with me? 
you get one of you. So, <laughs> as these scriptures, as we look at these, it goes on down up because it begins to list out things about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the sinful nature, the desire of the sinful nature. And it lists actually like 16 different things here. And then it says, and the such. So there's more. There's more than what is listed right here of things that will that are of the flesh and not of the spirit. And so I'm not going to go into all those or list them all today, but it goes down here, verse 21, the second part of it, and it says, I warn you as I did before, that those who live like this by the lust of the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's pretty bold. I don't want to live by the lust of the flesh. I don't want to become selfish and conceited. I want to live by the leading of the Holy Spirit. I want to walk with Him. That's why He's saying it. Walk with Him. Live by Him. And it goes on and said, but then the fruit of the Spirit, this is what's going to happen in your life when you are in unison with the Spirit of God. This love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness. And it begins to, to list these things that will happen in your life because you have surrendered. I surrender. You sang it. I surrender my worldly way of living to your spiritual way of living. Okay? Now it comes on. It continues to go on. We're called to walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. It says, verse 25, or verse 24, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature. What does it mean to crucify? Put to death. That's my choice. I can put to death the misdeeds or the lust of the flesh. Guess what? There is not any lust of the flesh that has more power than the Spirit of God. Now think about that. How many times have you or you've been around somebody said it says, you know what? I've got these anger issues and that's just how I am. Well, that's your choice. You have an ability to overcome that in Christ. You know what? All my relatives were alcoholics, so I guess I'm going to be an alcoholic myself. No, you have the ability to overcome. Remember, His Word was sent forth with the ability to accomplish what it was sent forth to do. And that's why it says in Galatians 5.1, it says, it was for freedom that Christ has set you free. He's done it. He set you free. Now let's walk into freedom. It says, stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Guess what? Lust of the flesh is slavery. That is the law. There's what do you understand what the law is. It keeps you in bondage. Okay. So, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Again, that's since we walk by the Spirit, let us keep in step with Him. Have you ever done that uh, three-legged race, two people, and you got the middle legs tied together, and you go, did you ever... Some people can run like that. Some people can. But if I want to keep in step with the Spirit, you know what? I'm, I, need, I feel like I need to step my game up a little bit. But how do I step my game up in keeping with the Spirit? I've become more determined to spend time with Him. I've become more determined to hear what He is saying. And I, be, and I am intentional about adding His character to my life. That love. That joy. We had a conversation this morning back there in our prayer room. I guarantee you we could have sat down and, and it would have been a tremendous ministry time. 
because we were talking about, did you ever have somebody in your life that you just go, I don't think I can ever forgive them for what they did. That's not the Spirit's attitude. Have you ever done something in your life that you can't? I can't ever forgive myself. God doesn't even like me. God doesn't want nothing to do with me. Let me tell you something. That is the flesh lying to you. It's an enemy. Walk in the Spirit. But what does it mean to walk? I had to look this up. I'll tell you, if when you study the Word, you do word searches. And I love word searches. And it goes... And uh, this, the word walk actually means to tread all around in. To tread all around in. What is, you know, I, I begin to visualize that. Have you ever put a, a bunch of little kids out when they're right after it's raining? What are they going to do? They're going to go play in the mud puddle. They're going to tread all in it. They're going to get covered from head to toe. Guess what God's invited us to do? Get covered from head to toe in His Spirit. In the advancement of his kingdom. And it says uh, to tread all around in, it means to walk at large. Walk at large. Proof of ability. I'm positive that the word that the Lord gives me has ability to accomplish what it was sent forth to do. I just need to know what he said. And I can't do that if I'm not walking with him, if I'm not with him, okay? But it also means to follow, to be occupied with. Did you ever notice that we live in a world that wants to occupy your time and your mind, your thoughts, your wills, your emotion, and it usually doesn't work out very good? When we walk in the Spirit or live by the Spirit, uh, become spiritual minded, or we have a heart that is rooted and grounded in love because God is love. Now, in Ephesians 2, verse 10, Ephesians 2, verse 10 tells us that it says, for we are God's workmanship. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Many times, and I have for years, and I know I've heard it taught this way many times, it's going, what does God have for you to do? I can tell you what He has for you to do. Follow Him. Hear His voice and follow Him. My sheep know my voice. We could go on or multiple, multiple scriptures talk about the relationship together. But whenever you take it about, well, what did God have for you to do? And you take it and going, I have to go do this. And you know what? So I can be where God wants me to be. You know what? Where he wants you to be is in unison with him. The word created, I had to look it up. I knew what it meant, but sometimes I know that what I know something means is incomplete. And so whenever I begin to look at this created in, it means to be, if I can say this word right, proprietorship of the manufacturer. You know what? He owns me. I was bought at a price. You were bought at a price as born again believers. But it also means to fabricate. Okay? Goes on to say, to form originally. You know what? I want you to look at your thumb. Now look at look at that. You know what? You see, you see all the little squiggly lines in there? There is not another one in the world like that. You're an original. 
That's how important you are. God created you like he didn't create anybody else. You are an original. You're not, you're not supposed to be like me. I know it's a dream, but it's not. <laughs> um, Father, forgive me. So. But it, <laughs> you want my hair. Yeah. Well, I left it in the other room. <laughs> the, uh, but it also means this word created also means to shape. Now remember, I was saved. I am being saved. But one day I will be saved. The best is yet to come. But right now, while I am being saved, He's shaping me. He's preparing me for things that are yet to come. We may live or be in a world of darkness, but it's not our home. I anticipate what's yet to come. Now, I'm not in a hurry to get off this world because I believe that's one of the things But man, Jesus, just hurry back and get us out of here. We still have work to do here. Remember, Jesus said that His food was to do the will of Him who sent Him. And He said, now you, all authority has been given to Jesus. And He said, now you, therefore go. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go immerse them in the good news that God has a better way. We have things to we have things to accomplish. But if I want to accomplish what God is shaping me into, now that word shape is something that You've been around me very long. You know, I like to do cross sticks and stuff. And so I did a cross stick with the word shape. Did anybody ever say, you want to get in shape? Physically? So you sit down and eat another piece of pie? Amen. <laughs> Round is the shape. <laughs> Round is the shape, yeah. So. But what about uh, spiritually? Did you ever make the deal? You go, man, you know what? I am. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to church every Sunday and I'm studying and I'm reading the word and I'm doing things and then something comes up and you can't do it. So, well, you're not alone. I just want you to know. But the thing is, is that this shape I know that no matter where I'm at, I'm supposed to be the same. And that's created in Him. And how many of you know that Jesus walked with the Spirit of God? He is the Spirit of God. But it goes on this. So my crossing for shape is spiritual, hearted, approachable, People expressing that. That gives me purpose in life. Now I could take each of these and I would love to do it sometime, but I, I can't for time today. But that word approachable, I know that you can think of several. You could have put in anointed. You could have put in so many different other words in these categories. And you know, you do what you want to do with that. But I know that there's a lot of people that profess to be Christians, but they're not approachable. How many of y'all know that Jesus is approachable? How many of you know that the Holy Spirit is approachable? In fact, he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Guess what? Rest is part of his character. And he desires that that would be manifested in our lives. Now, let me ask you something. The word 
is the seed of God. Let me ask you this. Is the seed of God dominant or dormant in your life? Is it dominant or dormant? Monday mornings when you go to work. Or Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever. I can tell you that the enemy wants to steal that dominance of that seed that will produce what it was sent forth to produce. I've got a couple other things that I want to share, but I want to be real brief with this. In First Peter, <clears throat> excuse me, First Peter one. Verse 20, <coughs> excuse me, verse 23. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. For all men are like grass and all, all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Stands forever. Okay? I want you to back up now to verse 22. Now that you have been pure, now that you have purified yourself, guess what? It's my choice. How do I purify myself? By allowing the Word of God to be dominant in my life, not dormant. Okay? It goes on and says, <clears throat> Purify yourself by obeying the truth that you, have, that you have sincere love for your brothers, love for one another deeply from the heart. God called us to love one another. How do we do that? We do that by building people up. And how do we build people up? Saying what Jesus said about them. Saying what Jesus said about them. I had one final scripture out of 2 Corinthians 13, and this is verse 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Now get a hold of that. What's he telling us? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Guess what? You are saved by grace through faith, not by your works. And the love of God. Guess what? God is love. And He poured out His love on you. And guess what? He's not mad at you. It doesn't matter where you're at. He wants to be there with you. But He also wants to lead you into all truth and righteousness. That's not a religious thing. That's a relational thing. It goes on and it says, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Now, why is it important to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit? I'm not going to get ahead of myself because I'm going to be going here before long in some teaching. But this fellowship begins to talk about walking with Him. You know, <clears throat> How many of y'all are married? Okay. Several. Have you ever been at outs with your spouse? I got a lot of players now. <laughs> Guess what? Did you ever feel like your fellowship was dampered at that time? Okay, you notice what I, some of those that their spouse isn't here with them today are shaking their head bigger than the others. So, <laughs> but in reality, the, the enemy wants to 
bust you up in the fellowship that you have in your natural, but he also wants to trip you up in your fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So he brings words into your life, thoughts into your mind that will try to lead you astray. But don't be cast from here to there. But you depend on the Spirit of God. That's what it means to walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit and grow in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. That means if I'm growing in that, it means it gets easier to hear. It gets easier to go with. <clears throat> Imagine yourself walking Tomorrow, when you get up to go to work or wherever you're going to go, imagine yourself as being in that three-legged race with the Holy Spirit. Imagine that He is tied with you or you are tied with Him. Your arms are locked hand in hand. And as you go forth, you're going forth with the attitude of I am victorious in Jesus' name. And you know what? That person that I usually don't get along with very good, Jesus died for them. How can I help them, Lord? How can I speak life into their life? How can I be the light, the salt that you called me to be? Remember, this isn't about religion. This is about an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. And you need to walk with the Holy Spirit. Father, again, I want to thank you, Lord, for who you are, for what you've done, and for providing a way, Father, that we may truly walk in the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ. But, Father, we know the only way that we can continue to see the blessings is by earnestly seeking you. And you said, Father, you would reward those who earnestly seek you to seek your kingdom, to seek your righteousness, your joy, Father, your, your peace, your, your mercy, the invitation that takes us beyond what we ever think can happen. Father, I thank you that your ways are higher than our ways and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So Lord, right now, I just ask that, Father, if there's somebody here that they find themselves in a place of bondage, may the freedom of Jesus Christ enter into their lives. Tenderize the heart. Mold and shape. And let them see the future, the anticipation of what's ahead. So, Father, let us fix our eyes on you, the author and the perfecter of our faith. I love you and thank you for loving us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anyone here? You